I'm going to start my talk with a question. What does C++ need? Some people this week th seem to think it's safety. But I'm here to say that maybe we should just stick to what we're good at. Maybe what we need is another cast. Because what happens if you find yourself in this situation? You have a function, it returns a variant, and the variant has two alternatives. But for some reason, you want to write another function that uses it, but returns a variant with a different superset set of alternatives. What are you going to write in that commented out section? Are you going to write something ad hoc, one of, or are you going to engage in every C++ programmer's favorite pastime, yak shaving with generic programming? Are you going to go and are you going to write variant cast where you take visit, you feed into generic lambda, and you map each and every one of the alternatives through into the destination variant type? Don't worry, I've sprinkled just enough decal type on this slide to convince you that I'm actually perfectly forwarding. Once we have this utility, we can go and we can plug it in our code and then it works. But we're C++ programmers. We know things. We know things the compiler doesn't. We know things the type system doesn't. So what if we happen to just know that despite the interface, foo only ever returns ints? What happens if we want to reflect that in our interface? What if we want to write this code? Well, we have a problem. Because the compiler doesn't really like that. Because we made a grave error when we were writing our cast. It is altogether too safe. And moreover, it only uses C++ 17. We have two more versions of the standard for me to show off on my slideware. So we can write variant cast unsafe. Actually, I should correct myself because I've been down this bike shedding before just a couple weeks ago. We should write unchecked variant cast. So let's take a stab at that. Let's write unchecked variant cast. We're going to take our generic lambda, cleave it in two. We're going to use some fancy C++ 20 constraints to make sure that that mapping function only gets selected when we can actually perform the mapping. Otherwise, we go to C++ 23 and we invoke a function that does every C++ developer's favorite thing. It just introduces undefined behavior into the program. But there's a problem here. This code lives in my perfect world, my perfect version of C++, one where local classes can have member templates, which unfortunately they can't. I've done my best to try and fix this problem through intense surgery to the C++ standard, but alas, it has heretofore not been adopted, so we need to take that local class, extract it, put it in a detailed namespace, give it a name that doesn't collide with anything else, repeat the template parameters, and then use it, and our code actually compiles. But users are funny people. They might decide they want to const qualify one of those alternatives. And you might think to yourself, okay, well that's just going to be another compiler error. But previously we deduced the type of the alternative by using remove CV ref T. And then we only did the mapping if it worked. And remove CV ref T on constant is int. And int isn't an alternative in two. And so all this slide does is just call std unreachable. And so it does absolutely nothing when you look at the generated assembly. Because what we need to do is get a separate source of truth about the active alternative and the value category that's actually coming in. So what we need to do is, of course, go through and re-implement all of the internals of std visit, which we're going to do right now. We're going to take visitor, we're going to extract it into an impl function we can take the address of so we can't use overloads anymore. So we're going to use if context for to disambiguate between the possible and impossible situation. I should probably air quote impossible as we all learn when we run with ubsan. Then of course we need to go and we need to make a lookup table and so we're going to do that with some fancy pack expansion, another detail um, class. And then of course we're going to go ahead and use it and now our code builds and does exactly what we want. But of course users are very, very funny people and so they might come along and say, hey, what happens if I have the same alternative twice? Which brings us to perhaps the most important lesson of the talk when the thought I want to leave you with, and that's that sometimes when you get a feature request from a user, you need to look them dead in the eyes and just say no.